Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you carried out sins in your own body on the tree so that we might have life. May we and all who remember this day find new life in you now and in the world to come where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The Passion of Our Lord, according to St. John. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, For whom are you looking? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, For whom are you looking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that had spoken, I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. I am not to drink the cup that the Father has given me. So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciple, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly about this to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I've said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. 
Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and at that moment the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king, for this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and a purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, But we have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters, again asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have a power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Should I crucify your king? 
The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. And he handed him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews. But this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided him, divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, They will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Armatia, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission. So he came and removed his body. Nicodemus who had at first came to Jesus by night also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about hundreds of pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus, wrapped it with spice and linen, clothes according to the burial custom of Jesus. Now, Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so because it was Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, laid Jesus there.
We move now into this section of the Good Friday liturgy called the Adoration of the Cross. The cross will enter the sanctuary into, in three stations, the same way that the light came in during midweek Vesper services and would have come in uh, to the fellowship hall to begin the vigil had we been able to do that. At each stop along the way, I'm going to sing Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the whole world, and you respond, O come, let us worship him. We'll do it on one pitch, and the, the pitch will change at each station. So we turn around, um, we'll turn around now and follow the cross in to the chancel area. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the whole world. Oh, come, come let us worship, worship him. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the whole world. Oh, come, come let us worship him. Behold the life-giving cross on which was hung the salvation of the whole world. Oh, come, let us worship him. The next section gives us the solemn reproaches. For each paragraph, the response to us, we will finish with holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, and you respond, have mercy on us. O oh, my people, O oh, my church, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I led you out of slavery into freedom and delivered you through the waters of rebirth, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy, holy God, God, holy and mighty, holy and, mighty, holy and, and immortal, immortal, have, have mercy, mercy on us. O oh, my people, O oh, my church, what more could I have done for you? Answer me. Forty years I led you through the desert, feeding you with manna on the way. I saved you from the time of trial and gave you my body, 
the bread of heaven, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy, holy God, God, holy and mighty, holy, holy and immortal, have, have mercy on us. O oh, my people, O oh, my church, what more could I have done for you? Answer me. I led you on your way in a pillar of cloud and fire, but you led me to the judgment hall of Pilate. I guided you by the light of the Holy Spirit, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy, holy and mighty, holy, holy and immortal, immortal have, have mercy, mercy on us. O oh, my people, O oh, my church, what more could I have done for you? Answer me. I struck down your enemies, but you struck my head with a reed. I gave you my peace, but you draw a sword in my name, and you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy, holy God, God, holy, holy and, and mighty, holy, holy and immortal, immortal have, have mercy on us. O oh, my people, O oh, my church, what more could I have done for you? Answer me. I opened the waters to lead you to the promised land, but you opened my side with a spear. I washed your feet as a sign of my love, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy, mercy on us. All my people, all my church, what more could I have done for you? Answer me. I lifted up to the heights, but you lifted me high on a cross. I raised you from death and prepared for you the tree of life, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal, have mercy on us. O oh my people, O oh my church, what more could I have done for you? Answer me. I came to you in the least of your brothers and sisters, but I was hungry, and you gave me no food, thirsty, and you gave me no drink, a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me, and you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and, and immortal, immortal. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. Amen. And as the darkness gathers around us outside and in our hearts, the tomb of Jesus is closed, symbolized tonight by the slamming of the book. If we were together in this space, this would be the time where we would invite you to come forward and place your 30 pieces of silver at the foot of the cross. If you have been collecting those and would like to put them at the foot of a cross in your home, please do that and then save that offering for the first time we are together where we will collect that money and it will be given to one of the charity organizations in our community. The time at the foot of the cross is a time for you to bring your 30 pieces and confess your sins. To just come to your cross and sit and pray. Or normally you could come to speak and pray with a pastor. Tonight what we are doing is we will sit by the rail and we will be looking at the Facebook feed to see people's names who have been joining the worship or who may have um, things that are going on, our prayer list and that sort of thing. But we will pray with you um, and with the people who are here uh, according to the Facebook feed. So we begin by dropping our 30 pieces of silver and then we'll enter into a time of prayer.
As Pastor Susan mentioned, imagine that you'll be kneeling here one by one. And even if we may not call all the names that we see on the Facebook, but just know that we'll be lifting all our members and everyone who is in need of prayers. We may not know for what we should pray for you, but at least we know from what's happening in people's lives, including your own, there's a common prayer. Gracious Lord, we lift up all these names before you, which you know their cry and their need. J. J. Holly. Cindy Brudo. Melissa Blake. Trey Lee. Sarah Lilly. Carol Jackson Lee. Julie Bet Walterson. Bonnie. Roxanne. Bonnie, we pray for Mike, your son, and good friends who is in the hospital in New York City with COVID-19. Tina Brush. Gary and Lisa Simonson. Tina Brush. Scott and Amy Schul Schulte. Dorothy Clapton, we pray for protection of health for Peggy and all. Denise Tyndall, we pray for the rest of your unit still in the quarantine, unable to be home with their family. Sophia Fakada, Yoni, Barry, Johanna, Tom Nelson, we pray for Tom and Lean and the family. Julie Stecky and Bart and for your family. Nancy Finity, we pray for all the medical personnel in harms. Cindy Camp, Matt, Nathaniel, Jeffrey, and Ashley Camp, we pray for all your family. Mandy, we pray for the family that you can't be with us at this time. Jenny McCoy and Ellie Angel Beck
Sally Berry for the family. Jean and John Bender for your friend Joanna Wilson who has lost her husband COVID, we pray. For the Dryman family. For the Myers family, Emily, Hang, Emma. For the Peterson family. For the Goodwin family. For Doug Steele and family. For the Ramirez family and a joyful homecoming for Denny Tyndall. For the Stewart family. For the Brockmeyer family. For the Dewey, Dewey family. And the Dewey family. For Janet Denny and Judy Thomas. For Phil and Pam Myers. Jackie and Norm Burke and celebration for healing in their family. For Bob Terman and all who are in shut ins. For Lizzie Ham and all our seniors who would be graduating in a few weeks. For John Moberg. For Sherry Blawickle, for Bill Blawickle, for Brenda Shower, for Linda Palmer, Jim and Carol Ferret, for Randy Dahl, for Alex Buell and his family. For Sarah Lilly and her family. Lord, this night we especially pray for all of our first responders. We pray for those who are separated from family. We pray for those who work in jobs that none of us would care to do, but we could not do without. Lord, we pray for the nurses the doctors 
and all medical personnel who are right now your healing hands as they do their best to bring healing to the sick and especially those who are sick with COVID-19. For Laveda and the Perry family, for the Claxtons, the Boxbergers, the Weidlers, the Guthries, the Binders, the Gustafsons, the Baileys, the Kerrs, Stacia Carter and her family, Roxana, Lord, for all your people who are with us this night, members of Advent in community, whether we are with one another or whether we are parted, we are yours and we ask for strength to be your eyes and your heart and your voice in a world where we cannot touch but help us find the ways to bring your light and your love into the darkness, especially for those who are alone and those who are dying. Tonight we lift up Linda Crossfield one more time. As her time draws near, we pray for Brenda and for Chuck as they sit at her bedside as she makes her way home to you. For the Rames family, for the Pedagogues, for Kim Dewey and her boys. for all of those on our prayer list, for all of those whose names you know, that we speak aloud now or in the silence of our hearts. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend for all whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. <clears throat> 